thinking after completion of regression plot we are back with this diagram now here if you see we have completed all these segments now we need to start with matrices and in this we're gonna learn about heat maps now what is definition of heat maps when i start thinking about it i thought of googling it and guess what when i googled it i got a number of definition and i was completely puzzled of thankfully i got one which i really liked and that says a heat map is a graphical representation of data where values are depicted by color let's understand this further hello everyone welcome to the channel and to understand the concept very clearly please watch the video till the end once you are done with watching the video do not forget to like comment subscribe and hit the bell icon so let's take an example here you have the data frame and you have which has 87,864 rows and 10 columns. In this, you have one variable sales and you want to see the sales, summary of sales by outlet year and outlet size. So for that, till now, what we used to do is we were directly plotting the graphs based on original data. But here, the things are slightly different and you need to transform your data a little bit. So here, we just transformed our data sales data basis on outlet size and outlet year which would look something like this and once it is transformed we're gonna have our heat map created which will give you a visual representation something like this now by just looking at this image you can say of course you have to take a reference of this bar here if you see the least amount is darker and the topmost amount is lighter so looking taking a reference from this bar you can say this is the list amount and this sorry this is the highest amount and this is the list amount boss this is the visual representation now you can say this is the highest and this is the list but what is the number then heat map also provides you multiple options to style a heat map and by doing that you can convert it something like this thus with a combination of heat map styling you can have a very good visual representation of your data that's where the heat map is really helpful now to like i said to create a heat map it is very important that your data frames should be in the form of matrix and you can do that with the help of pivot or with the correlation or many other methods are also there these two we will discuss in our example by default seaborn has all these arguments for heat map out of which we will learn all those which are most important and most frequently used so now let's go to the jupyter notebook and try to understand this further so here we are in the jupyter notebook and like you can see as usual i have imported all the required libraries and here i am importing this data frame which i will be providing at github and the link will be available in the description section you can take a reference from there here is nothing here it's nothing just i'm changing the vi visual method of column names to lowercase and here just taking the sample data now here i'm just checking the shape of the data how many rows and columns are there and then here i just converted the data sales data basis on outlet size and outlet year in the form of pivot table now to make the video uh, shorter i did this already right i already completed this now we will start with directly heat map right so for that i just gonna say heat map and in that what i'll do is i'll supply the data so the data is just mart and mart p which is of course the p word till now we saw that whatever plots we learned we were supplying the data frame as well as the x-axis and y-axis columns but here you need to supply the complete data frame all right now here we have our first heat map created now this is looking quite wide if you want you can just set the size as well all right so let me do some sort of styling set style and that i will do white and here i will just say plt dot figure boom and in the fig size fig size i will say let's make it five by five okay now this is slightly better 
still if you see these boxes are not looking good then what you can do is you can say a square equals to true and then you can see this is more uglier so i'm just going to remove this but uh, just take a note that we have the option to do that part all right so let's keep this now here you got your heat map created what is it that we want to do now is we want to populate the numbers how can we populate that for that you just need to say annotate equals to true annotate is true now here you got the number but you see the challenge these numbers are truncated and not looking very good so for that you have one option which is called fmt and in that you need to provide the decimal values which you want to see so i want to see zero decimal values and with that we use f which is float which rep uh, represents to the float now you have the round figure but still if you see the numbers are not looking pretty good right so for that you have another option which is called anode kws and in that you're going to pass a dictionary and in dictionary you can say size equals to let's say 15 i can say size equals to 15 oops looks something wrong well the problem here is it's not s it will be size all right now you have your numbers looking bigger so if you want to make it bold what you can do is you can just say weight weight equals to bold and then you have the bold numbers right if you want you can change the colors as well but i would highly recommend prefer not to use that because that just makes it complicated to understand because you won't be able to read the number over here so let heat map take care of those things take care of the font colors right and rest of the things we will set now this is how you can style the heat map other than this if you want you can just create the lines as well for that all that you need to do is say line width and for that i will pass the value 0 0.5 if you want you can uh, if you want you can change the line color also but before that now if you want you can change the line color as well and for that you can do this just say line color and then color name is black if you like it then it is good otherwise you can just comment this and you can have this now other than this if you want you can use the palette as well the way we have been using in all of our plots but here you just need to say see map and if you are not sure what sort of palettes do we have available then you can just say pass the blank value and hit control plus enter in jupyter notebook and here you're gonna have all the set of colors right color palettes you can pick any one of them and you can just put it away here and here you're just gonna have a very beautiful alternative color palette so this is how you can use all the options here we will take another example and we will see the data with correlation and for that what we're gonna do is just create the correlation of all the numeric variables with each other so mar.cor and here we have our table created correlation plot created now if you know about pearson's correlation then you know that ranges value ranges between minus one to plus one right here we have our correlation created uh, between all the numeric variables in mart data set now we will try to plot a heat map using this correlation data right and let's run this now here we got the correlation this is looking scary if this is looking scary don't worry we are just going to make it look beautiful so we'll do some we'll make some sort of arrangement now let's look at this bar here it is ranging from 0 to 1 so what we're going to do is we will specify the range for that we will say v mean that means minimum value which we want to see see on this bar that will be minus 1 then v max that we want to have 1 and center value we want to have 0 this will change the color as well so if you see here we got that right now if you see the lighter bluer color represents to minus one and then the lightest color represents to one so one correlation one will be va same va between same variables so if you see here this variable and this variable have same 
uh, these both of the both of these two variable are same that's why we have this color right now if you want you can change the uh, cmap right and in that we will use the same color palette again we will try to use annotation over here we can annotate it and uh, for annotate we just need to say true here we got our value and again we can we use fmt equals to 0.1 f we want to see one decimal point again we can use anode keywords anode keywords and we can pass a dictionary for size we can say 15 that's the idle one and weight weight we can pass bold now you must be have must be having questions what all are these styles that we can pass on over here for that what you can do is you can visit this website seabonds website and from here in the styling section here you have all the list of font properties so you can try all of these stuffs right coming back over here now we will just make it bold and then line color line color we are gonna use black this time this time it will look good now line color is not working what is wrong with that let's investigate it well so there is nothing wrong with line color it is showing it but it's just you have to use the line width so that it could be visible right so if you use that you gotta get the line color over here now, other than this there are many other op arguments and options which i highly encourage you to go ahead and try that in case if you get any doubt just put that into the comment section i'll try to with this i would like to end this video otherwise it will be too large and you won't like to watch this thank you very much for watching the video and hope you like it all the best